This episode of the Soupcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they usually say our season will take your barbecue from good to great. With great box setting, box options over at the madcanadianbbq.com, such as the Sweet Heat. This is their combination of sweet and heat seasonings that he has great for chicken wings great for just a variety of uh options they can use these for four horsemen discord old-fashioned and the two border is in that box set or the just send it it's your boat it's your versatile seasoning set set your s p buds your salt it. and pepper say it's your salt and pepper Turn it uh, southern on mix style. sonoran oh. heat the cajun and the smoked uh, check out those and much, much more over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. That is the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Use that promo code Sloopcast10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. This episode of the Sloopcast is also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Who? The Iron Bean Coffee Company. They're an Ohio based, veteran owned micro roaster. Uh, they're out of Perrysburg, which is just outside of Toledo, Ohio. Uh, they are a company that does everything right. All of their beans are fair trade certified and USDA organic. Uh, they do all of their own importing of the beans. Many of their coffees are uh, single origin, which means they all come from the same farm. It's not just a giant shipment of generic coffee beans. And uh, I talk a lot about a lot of their coffees. One of the ones I've not talked about to this point is the Raging Tiger. Now, Kyle, I like a good... Uh, bourbon barrel aged beer well these beans have been barrel aged uh you have to keep an eye on the site because the the quantities are limited uh, they currently don't have any but you you got to keep an eye on the site there's a notification thing uh these sell out quickly um it's it's uh let's see Packaged in a Nordic whiskey bottle, um, there are uh, what? Where was? Uh, here we go. Uh, forty-five days, forty-five days aged in a whiskey barrel. So I know, and Nomad's not currently in the chat, but I know Nomad has bought a couple of these. I don't know if he's cracked it open yet or not. I have not yet had the pleasure. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna have to have a, a chat with Nomad to see. If this is everything it is cracked up to be, and judging by all the customer reviews, it must be. I've not yet had the pleasure, but uh, it's a thing to keep an eye on. Uh, so that's, uh, I, I'm going to have to do it eventually. I'm going to have to do it eventually. But you can find that coffee and a lot more coffees that are a lot more reliably in stock over at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. What's up, YouTube? This is our private YouTube conversation just for YouTube people. Everyone else is listening to our Black Keys intro that you can hear on the audio only version. This, however, is the private YouTube conversation because YouTube doesn't screw around with media strikes. Nope, they sure don't. <laughs> uh, Kyle, did we get all of a sudden a little bit quiet on the on, on your end? Um, no, I'm good on my end here. Maybe a little bit. I'm gonna I'm bump the volume up just a tad. All right. Although, you know, we run filters and stuff over this, so probably no one listening is going to notice, but I notice, okay? I notice. All right, Kyle, we have a lot to get to today, so let's, uh, let's jump straight into it. <laughs> that look on Kyle's face is like, liar. <laughs> <laughs> we got a fun episode, though. So let's oh, absolutely. It. You've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Well, welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm doing all right here. How are you doing, Jared? Uh, you know, it's early. We're uh we're we're still in upper phase of the day. So if anything breaks, if anything breaks uh late on Sunday, sorry. <laughs> Just blame me. 
<laughs> whenever we have to record at a weird hour it's almost always kyle's fault because he actually has a life <laughs> <laughs> i got my um my wife's little brother has a big um like a big uh regional soccer game where if they win they get to play nationals so he's in a, oh, wow. like a club he's in a club soccer league so it's a big game today pull that mic in right to your face there kyle I feel like I feel like you're you, I feel like you're drifting. I feel like you're drifting. Yep, I'm kind of backing up and then getting right <laughs> into it. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's get into it. Um, let's let's um cover some Buckeye news. The very few news, just little news <laughs> that we got in the past week here. Uh, Stuart, scheduling it is ch- too early. Scheduling changes. Hold on, Stuart. We have been over this. It is too early to mow your lawn on on for a oh, weekend. Wait. No, it's it, we agree, Jared. No. It's after nine a.m. No, he is perfectly fine. No, nine a.m. No, is fine. Uh uh-uh. uh No, sir. I, I'm I'm all good with Stuart as long as he didn't do it at eight fifty nine. Nine oh one, you're good. The, this is <laughs> this is an ongoing thing in the Discord. Uh, all right. Uh, yeah. So sorry, Kyle. You were saying. You uh, were being yeah. The. Hmm. Uh, okay. Ooh, I don't know. I don't know about that, Stuart. All right. Uh, Buckeyes and Oregon scheduling another home and home. Well, not really another because COVID and stuff, but they scheduled a home and home for 2032 and 2033. Technically, they did schedule a home and home. It just didn't yeah. <laughs> just didn't pan Happen. out that way. Yeah. So 32 and 33, you know, I, I like seeing these big time matchups it's just it's just too far away yeah and this is this isn't a ohio state problem nor is it an oregon problem uh it's just a college football problem that they schedule these things so far out in advance and i'd like to see that change but it would take uh cooperation across conferences and if last year taught us anything there is there is none so (laughs) yeah uh gene smith gene yes. smith getting an extension there was a lot of rumors a lot of going around about is gene smith heading out heading out west to be the pac-12 commissioner right nope he decides he 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 wants to stay at ohio state and for the record i don't i mean i i don't know he was offered the job i so i i don't know if it was his decision to make but uh, <laughs> yeah. oh. True, true. But either way, Gene Smith getting an extension at Ohio State. Yeah, the Pac-12 was looking outside of academics for their commissioner, and they they followed through on that. I think the person they picked up is, I think, on the media side of sports. So I I'm I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure. And Kyle, do not look it up. Because I do not care. It's fine. <laughs> oh, it, it's probably a good thing because you're gonna you're gonna probably struggle pronouncing his last name. There we go. So it it, it never happened. Okay. All right. Um and just speaking I, of future- just for the record, I like Gene Smith. I know that a lot of Ohio State fans do not like Gene Smith, and I get why. I, I do think there were things mishandled. Uh, especially around tat gate and other other stuff and so i'm not i'm not saying that he's done a 100 percent perfect job at ohio state that's not at all what i'm saying um but i will say he was a huge advocate for the university and the football team and for small false sports in general last year and i think he deserves a ton of credit for that i think that he hired urban meyer which took this program over the hump and i think that he also made great basketball hire in uh did he hire thad mata well regardless Mm. he hired holtman so that was great he and urban sort of together kept kept the band together by putting ryan day in charge of the football program that's turned out to be a great decision 
a lot of a lot has been right with Gene Smith. And I again, I'm not excusing the things that went wrong. I'm just saying he's also done a lot of things right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, Speaking of future games, the early the early point favorite has been announced. Yeah. Ohio State, 11 and a half point favorite over the skunk bears up north. Uh, man, I I feel like that's a steal. Is that a steal? Like, don't real life gamble. I, I, I and, so. for, and if you are going to real life gamble, for God's sakes, do not take my advice. But <laughs> I feel like I feel like that number is only going to get bigger as the season goes. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Uh, last thing here, I'm um, kind of reiterate from last week's episode. Uh, not this week, not this weekend, but the following weekend, uh, June 4th weekend. So June 4th through the 6th is the the weekend for recruiting for Ohio State. Yeah. A lot of big, big time prospects coming into Ohio State for a visit. Be sure to check out last week's episode for more information as we go in depth about players coming in for the visit and who to keep an eye out for. Yeah. 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 It's like Kyle said, something we went in depth on last week. Um, I we provided 16 names, uh, many of whom are visiting on June 4th, 16 names of uncommitted players who I think are among the most likely you know, out of that pool are among the most likely to to join the Ohio State class. Yep. All right, Jared, let's get into the meat of the episode here. Yes, let's. So uh, one of the things we like to do over in the Discord channel is ask people to not just provide us ask Sloopcast questions, standard ask Sloopcast questions, but we also ask for um, the what we call wasteland topics and a wasteland topic is for this, uh, this time when we're sort of after the draft, but before the fall camps and we don't necessarily have a ton of Ohio state news that we call this area, the wasteland. And we ask for wasteland topics. Uh, basically they're just ask Sloopcast questions, but require a lot more time to sort of talk about and, and figure out. So that's what we're doing today. And this wasteland topic comes from Duncan, who we affectionately refer refer to as Duncan from the Discord. He says, pick a team uh, or more. He he said two, but we're doing a lot more than two today, Duncan. Uh, pick a team or more uh, that year after year is great, but can't seem to get over the hump um, to the elite. He name checks a few teams here, uh, diagnose what's keeping them from making the jump and what they need to do. Uh, uh, Nope, that's not what he said. And (laughs) and what is it they do so well that keeps them almost elite? Uh, So, Kyle, we we made uh, a list of teams here. And Mm -hmm. I mean, I I I stretched this question a little bit. So I I think we have some teams here that are pretty good that need to make that jump into great. We have a couple teams here that are great that need to make that jump into elite. So I I sort of broaden the question out a tad. So Kyle, where would you like to start? Pick a name out of the list. Honestly, let's let's start with um, teams in the Big Ten. All right. let's, Let's do teams in the Big Ten. And I think... You know, let, let's go, let's go, let's go out to the, as we like to classify them as the big Northwest conference okay. uh, division. Um, let's go, let's uh, go just to Wisconsin. For the record, that's big North West, not I, big Northwest. I, yes. <laughs> um, Wisconsin, go with Wisconsin, the team that for the most part, sure. um, year in and year out always seems to be really good, gives, um, Top tier teams troubles when they play them. Big offensive lineman, big running back play, and just stellar defense overall. Yet is never brought up when people start talking playoffs. 
you know, it, no, go, go, no, no reputable, per, no reputable person out there is putting Wisconsin in their, in their playoff. Why? So why? What, why is Wisconsin always around, always pretty good, always winning lots of games, but never quite making it over that hump? And they're always, it seems like they're always the pick to win their, their division, their side there. Uh, yeah, I would say more often than not, um, them, Northwestern, Iowa seem to be those teams. But yeah, Wisconsin, I would definitely say is probably the most likely year in, year out. Yeah. And, and for them, I feel like there was a couple of years when they got to that elite level and they had a... I'll get to it. And I, I know you're giving me this look, Jared, but <laughs> there was a couple of years where they were up there when they were getting a lot of great recognition. And it was because they had offensive firepower. It wasn't just so much, oh, we're going to run three, four yards per play and just, just wear you down. They had a great quarterback. They had a couple of um, good receivers. They just couldn't put it all together in the end too. And I I'm talking about that, um, um, was it 2000 around 2010 time when um, Wilson came over yeah. to Wisconsin? That 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 type of year there. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think quarterback play has a lot to do with it. Not all of it, because it's good. You know, it's not like Russell Wilson showed up and they became a national title contender. So let's let's not say it's all quarterback play, because it's not. Um, I think Wisconsin is a team that can, if we sort of talk about how do you get over that hump, which I think is something we should talk about. How do you not just, you know, why why aren't they getting over the hump? How could they get further over it? I think Wisconsin's a team that can benefit greatly from the transfer portal. Russell Wilson was one of those first big time instant transfers back when you know, the, the graduate transfer was just starting to become a normal thing. And, you know, they are getting better at recruiting quarterbacks. I, I think it's an offensive firepower issue and obviously not running backs. That's, that's, you know, been a Wisconsin thing for a very long time, having very good running backs. And one of the things that keeps them in that top, whatever area in that, sort of top contender area, at least within their division in the Big Ten, is the fact that they have consistently very good offensive lines. Consistently very good offensive lines. That will take you a long way, and it has taken Wisconsin a long way. So how are they always sort of up here, even if they're not getting up here? Offensive line play. I would say another thing that's holding them back is a lack of consistent athleticism in the defense. Their defenses are always very solid, but aside from an occasional what, aside from an occasional defensive back here or there, their defenses are mostly solid, but not great. I So I think... For me, for me, Jared, and I think I'm going to get a lot of um, a lot of discussed um, takes here. Really reminds me of like Big Ten in general. Yeah, in the mid to late two th- or really the the two thousands. Solid pre, defense, pre-urban then, Big Ten. Say but it. That, it's but a pre-urban then, Big Ten. But then all of a sudden, you go into bowl season and you get into more. You get to play teams that are more athletic, and you see why you see why there's that difference then. Yeah, it's sort of like why when people talk about, you know, when you hear and I know oh Ohio State fans, Big Ten fans, they don't want to hear this. But when you hear the term SEC speed, that doesn't mean that there aren't any fast players in the Big Ten. That means that in the SEC and at Ohio State and other elite schools. So we're also talking about Clemson and we're also talking about other elite schools here. But when you're talking about like that SEC speed thing, we're not just talking about the wide receivers or the defensive backs. We're talking about the defensive linemen 
who have like that twitch, who have that instant get up and go. You know, it's 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 more of a general team speed than it is a you know fastest player versus fastest player thing and i think that's one of the problems with wisconsin and a lot of the teams in the big 10 is a lack of consistent athleticism yep agreed all right um we got a lot here i know we could spend a lot of time on wisconsin but let's let's move on to another team uh going out east here um are not rivals Penn State. Yeah, not our rivals. Uh, I think one, I, I have to put a lot of this on James Franklin. One hundred percent. That's that's not one hundred percent. Well, that's my thought. That's my thought right away. There, uh, I feel like great recruiter. I think he's a great motivator, but I think as an in in game coach, absolutely is not good. He's not good. He's made some very very questionable decisions overly in, conservative um in in some of the like big games whether it's against ohio state against michigan against bowl games whatever the case may be very questionable and just again kind of like with wisconsin not consistent but i not a not consistent team but i think more so it's the questionable play calling down the stretch play calling and just game management in general he's a terrible game manager james franklin is a terrible game game manager um and i and i i think there's a cultural issue at penn state i i don't see a cohesive team a lot of the times when i see penn state that's that's just my feeling on that um Mm -hmm. and again when you talk about culture that is a and that's a coaching issue. I mean that that's the head a cultural issue is a is a Penn State head coach issue. And Honestly, Jared, let, let's let's combine this with Michigan too. I, I feel I feel well, like what's happening Penn State is similar. I feel to like Michigan what's happening too. at Michigan is more complicated than Penn State. Uh personally. But I feel, I feel like what you're saying really carries over to Michigan as well. Uh, as far as there just being a culture issue, absolutely. Um, but yeah, uh, um, I, I think Penn State recruits well. Um, I think they were recruiting better, but I think that the shine has come off of the James Franklin era at Penn State. I think James Franklin probably was the perfect hire at that time. And he absolutely brought Penn state up back to a certain point. But I, I don't think he's sometimes he, sometimes you're not the guy that gets to the promised land, but sometimes you're the guy that gets you to the guy that gets you to the promised land. And I think James Franklin was that. And I think that when he does leave Penn state, he will leave it better than he found it. Mm-hmm. And I think he deserves a ton of credit for that, but I don't think he's the guy to get Penn State to the national title. Yeah. I mean, it's not a lack of um, players there, too. I mean, since 2017, so the past uh, five recruiting cycles, top 15 in each year, and even as high as uh, sixth, I believe. Uh, so look at 2020, 15th, 2019, 12th. 20, um, 17, 15, uh, 20, 2018, sixth. They, they had the sixth best in 2018 here. Yeah. Like it's at, at that point, talents there. It's, it's gotta be, it's gotta be on the coaches to whether it's motivation, culture, um, whatever the case may be there. Um, I, I feel like this is, this really brings up, um, a quote that, I uh, I recall Urban Meyer saying a couple of years ago, I believe, and this goes a lot into Michigan as well, or or I'll I'll just kind of start start reading it here. Uh, Urban Meyer was quoted here. Every time I see a team struggle, every time it's fallen into one of three issues. One, it's a trust issue with coaches and players. If the players don't trust the coach, the coaches don't trust the players, or it's just, or it's awful if the players just don't trust each other. Um, 
that a, that to me feels very Michigan right now. Yeah. Um, it's a dysfunctional work environment where the expectation is very high, but we don't work hard. I can't, I can't, I can't say for certain that's Michigan and or Penn state, but right. Um, and the last one is you got a selfish team. Football is an unselfish sport. You got to, you have to do the nasty. If I'm a running back. I got to go and protect my quarterback. You don't always get to carry the ball. And sometimes you have to go running down a kickoff 22 miles an hour and throw yourself into someone going 15 miles an hour on the other way. It's not fun, but it's what you do. Um, you love your team and teammates. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's, it's hard to say exactly what is wrong within, within Penn state, but I think yet, it's, I think I was, was going to gonna say he, he, and he was, he was talking more. So at the time, I forget again, I forget which year this was, but it had to be, he was, this, directing, it had he to was directing 2020. This, yeah. He was directing this to, Penn State, LSU, and Michigan. Which means it had time. to have been 2020, because remember, Penn State dropped the first four games last year. LSU tanked last year without Joe Burrow, and Michigan's Michigan. Um, yeah, I, I I don't know exactly what's wrong with, with, with Penn State, but I, I think it's probably time to move on from Franklin, because... I, I just think it's probably time. He's a terrible game manager. And I, I kind of just don't feel like, again, if we're talking uh, number one, where there are trust issues, I, I start, I'm starting to feel like maybe that's what's going on with Penn state where it's just maybe Franklin's time has come and everyone knows it, mm -hmm. which yep. translates us perfectly into Michigan. Yes. And I, no I one thinks like Harbaugh is going to be there in two years. Does anyone think, and I, come on, someone raised their hand. Does anyone think that Jim Harbaugh is the head coach at Michigan two seasons from now? I think every Ohio State fan wants to raise their hand. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. I didn't ask what you want. I asked, <laughs> what do you think is going to happen? Is he still yeah. the head coach at Michigan in two years, Kyle? For those in audio, Jared and I are not raising our hands. No, no, we are not. <laughs> For the audio only listeners, uh, our hands are down. No, no Man, one like, thinks that. So, me, like, why me, would you go? Why would you go there and play? You know, it's sort of like what happened with Tom Herman at Texas. Urban Meyer basically orchestrated uh, an entire thing where he. <laughs> He basically, Texas went after Urban Meyer. Urban Meyer, I don't know if it, I'm, I would guess, leaked the fact that Texas was courting him through his media people, his media buddies, basically to undermine Tom Herman as a, as a giant middle finger to Tom Herman for everything that Tom Herman did to Urban Meyer. Um, mm -hmm. And at that point, Texas had no choice but to fire Tom Herman after that because there's no going back. You can't keep going with the football program after it became public knowledge that you were trying to replace him. Mm -hmm. and, yep. and so that's part of the problem. And we'll get to Texas. That's part of the problem there. But that's also part of the problem with Michigan. No one seemed eager to sign to resign here. Harbaugh was talking to NFL teams. Michigan wasn't trying very hard to re-sign him this offseason, and they finally do get a contract. And it's a contract that basically has no buyout clause. Like, and in college football, that's as good as a one-year contract. It's as good as a one-year contract. That's all it is. I don't care how long the term of the contract is. It's it's like it's like an NFL player signing a contract with no guaranteed money. If there's no guaranteed money on an NFL contract, it's meaningless. It's absolutely so, meaningless. And that's so with, what Harbaugh is currently under at Michigan. So you want to talk about a lack of trust. Mm -hmm. Harbaugh doesn't trust Michigan. Michigan doesn't trust Harbaugh. And everyone, including the players, know it. So why would the players instill any trust in Michigan or Harbaugh? 
Mm-hmm. You want to talk yep, about that, trust issues? There, it's all Michigan is right now. Look, look at look at all of the all of the transfers going out of there. Not just players, right. but coaches too. Yeah, anyone who has a chance to go elsewhere is going elsewhere. They had a kid go to Tennessee, and Tennessee is nearly as big a dumpster fire as Michigan right now. Like, if you're leaving, so if you're leaving a what is supposed to be a top tier program. To go to Tennessee, you know that's a problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, absolutely. So that's number one of what Erwin Meyer said. Trust issue. Number two here, dysfunctional work environment. Yeah. Again, there. Well, yeah, but I, in all, with all due respect to Urban Meyer, one leads to two here. Like, if there aren't, if there are no trust issues, then the work environment's dysfunctional. Yeah, and. And part of me too, like you see a lot of the, you see a lot of the games with Michigan the past few years. I really think it really comes down to execution a lot of the time with Michigan. I, th- I think the play calling is fun. I think what Ir- I think of what about said Urban, <laughs> what um, Jim Harbaugh has done at Michigan. I think he's doing it well. I think he's doing it well in terms of play calling, especially like in tight tight scenario games it just really comes down to execution. There's just the execution from the players is just not clicking. It's just not there. I feel like the turning point for Michigan or maybe the turning point that wasn't for Michigan was the revenge tour. Michigan was back. Michigan was back. When was Michigan going to be back? Everyone keeps asking, when's Michigan going to be back? When's Michigan going to be back? This isn't one of those. This isn't, this wasn't one of those. Oh, Texas is back. No, this was a, yeah, Michigan was a really good team, and Ohio State fans were like, uh oh. Yeah, that was <laughs> a really, really good Michigan team, especially on the defensive side of the ball. They were good enough on the offensive side of the ball, defensive I, side I of the ball. They were, I think, at one point they were like number one in pass and rushing defense. Yeah, like they were, they were stout, stout defense. And that was the year the to turn around Michigan. And then what happens when they showed up to the horseshoe? I was saying, and then Columbus happened. <laughs> they got, they didn't just lose. Like it sucks yeah. when you lose, but Ohio State said, Oh, you got the number one defense in the country. Let us carve that to pieces for you. And they just, it just ran them off the field. And I, I feel like it's just all gone downhill from there. And that, that was the beginning of the end for the Harbaugh era. Mm-hmm. Even though it's still going on, <laughs> it's still, Oh, yeah, we're not at the end of the end of the Harbaugh era yet. That was the beginning of the end of the Harbaugh era. And uh, yeah. speaking of the Harbaugh era, let's let's <laughs> yeah, yeah. let's let's you go to Toledo. What I was gonna say. <laughs> let's go to Toledo, which is not not Michigan. That's where you stop when you guys when you get to Toledo, just stop. Nothing. Nothing good happens after Toledo. Also, when you stop at Toledo, make sure to stop at the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is an Ohio-based, veteran-owned, micro-batch, roast-to-order coffee company. They have all of the amazing coffees. Uh, basically, do you like a medium roast? Do you like a dark roast? Do you like a flavored coffee? Do you like unflavored coffees? Do you like not just a dark roast, but maybe you want to even go to the next level and get a straight up black roast. That's right. They they go next level and get to an absolutely black roast coffee. Uh, that is the Fear No Evil. The Fear No Evil, uh, like I said, black roast coffee, roasted beyond dark. So if you're a dark coffee person, try your hand at this. Um, it's has a smell is smoky, exotic and rich. The taste is bold. Um, they monitor it well while roasting with all five of their senses, uh, rich, black, dark roast, void of all light. The sheen is like polished armor. It feels like cocoa. It is butter smooth. This is uh, from a diverse geographic patchwork of sedimentary rocks and volcanic streams. Uh, from Indonesia, uh, coax the bean along the razor's edge straight into the valley of death. That's right. That's right. By the way, I said this last week, whoever writes these things, I don't know if it's uh, 
I don't know who writes these things, but they're brilliant. I love I love all of the writing on the Iron Bean Coffee Company website. I, I love all of it. Um, so uh, low in acidity, high in flavor, never bitter, completely smooth taste. A lot of the things you necessarily wouldn't expect out of a black roast, but but here we are. So you can pick up that coffee or you can pick up a lot of other coffees, including more of a traditional dark roast or some medium roast. And they even got the Loki, which is a light medium roast, the medium light roast. Uh, so you can check out all those things over at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. And once you're done in Toledo, head down I-75 for about 45 minutes, an hour, depending on how fast you go and go 30 minutes and meet up. Me. 30 minutes <laughs> and go meet up the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company in Cary, Ohio. Mad Canadian has been sponsor of ours for long a long time now. A long time. Long time. Long time. Uh, great, great guy um, with even maybe even better seasonings. And he, no, great guy, better seasonings, even better than that, his beard. So if we're, Ooh, if we're going yeah. for going tier, for going tier one beard, two seasoning. Three, great guy. Yes. <laughs> um, but it's all this, real so, close. Yeah. Mention some of the seasoning or the some of the boxes that you can purchase over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Let me let me go into some of them here. Uh the Discord here, which is an interesting one. You're like Discord. Never heard of that before. Well, it's because of the great the great community we have in our Discord, which you can find in the doobly doos down below. Um Discord.com. Where, where our, our fellow our fellow um, listeners in our Discord have tested it out. He sent different seasoning, different seasonings out to them and said, hey, try this out, try this out. And he says here, we test, test, and test here. The issue we have is sometimes one of our seasonings is really awesome in two different ways. He had the four horsemen, his his really spicy one. And then we had the and then came up with the Discord, which is a different blend that has a sweeter base to it. Still spicy, not as spicy. But it gives it that unique um, flavor. There are people that disagree that's, with you. That's different the than the Four Horsemen. I agree um, with you. I think the Four Horsemen is slightly spicier. But uh, if you take that question down to the Discord, there are people who tell you that the Discord is actually a tad spicier. I don't know okay. why. I agree with you. Yeah, it's I great think for sweet, chicken. I think the sweet takes a little bit of the heat off. But I, I, I apparently people disagree with us. Great on chickens, ribs, and heck, I even heard somebody put it on their burger too. Give it that little bit of um, spiciness to the burger too. Why not? Why not? Explore, explore out. Check, check that seasoning and much, much more over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. That is the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Use that promo code Swoopcast10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where he has your butt covered. All right, Kyle, uh, where do you want to go next? Um, I think since we spent a lot of time in the Big Ten here, I think we need to move a little bit quicker if we want to get through. I don't know if you want to get through. We all know of the them, Big but... Ten. We know the Big Ten teams more, so obviously we're going to talk about them more. All right, That's you fine. know what? Big Ten country. Let's go with Notre Dame. Yeah, um, Notre Dame. I think is trying. I, I think you talk about like that next hump. They made the playoffs last year, which was a new thing for them. First playoff they appearance beat, last year. They beat so, Clemson. What's that? They beat Clemson. They beat Clemson in the regular season. Absolutely. So Notre Dame definitely got over a hump last year. So, you know, if we're if we're putting teams in tiers where it's like you have that top tier, which we have talked about many times on this show, is basically Ohio State, Alabama, and Clemson. That's your top tier. Then you have a second tier, which has more teams in it. I wouldn't have put Notre Dame in that tier last year at this time. I think I would put them in that tier at this time. Would you, Kyle? Would you say they're in that very, very good second tier of teams? Absolutely. And their and their uh recruiting says says wise too. 15, 18th, and then they had the ninth best last year too. So it's really going to come down to how are are these players going to develop? And once you get over that hump. This this is the year to really figure out Notre Dame. Are they going to continue to stay over that hump there and 
be able to compete, be that team that everybody talks about. Who's going to make the playoffs this year? Alabama, Ohio State, uh, Clemson, and That's, Notre Dame. <laughs> yeah, right. Right now, that team has mostly been Oklahoma to this point. Maybe mm-hmm. Notre Dame it becomes that fourth team. Um, you know, Georgia sort of is is in that conversation as well. Uh, so Notre Dame, I think, I think it's just going to take a couple years, maybe. I think is basically it. And I think that they got over a hump last year and that it takes time. So I think Notre Dame's trending positively right now. Mm -hmm. I feel like we're going to say a lot of bad things about a lot of teams. So let's, let's be positive here. I think Notre Dame is trending positively. Can they keep it up? No, no, absolutely. I, as far as like what's hurt them in the past. Say it was mostly talent. Yeah, I, I think I really think it was talent and they just got outmatched with athleticism versus versus just let me let me also say team. this. And it's never one player, but like Ian Book was only ever going to get them so far. And is 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 Ian Book back? He's back, right? He didn't enter the draft. Because I think it was supposed to be his last year, but like last year didn't technically count for anyone. Um, I so maybe maybe it's Ian Book, um, because he's gotten better through the years, but I I still don't think he's a guy that I I think to win a national title. No, nope, nope. He he did he he is unsigned draft pick. Okay, to so New Orleans. I, I and I don't know what's coming after Ian Book. I've not deep dove the the Notre Dame depth chart, and even if I knew who the name was, I wouldn't necessarily know if he was any good. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know a lot about Notre Dame to this point. I've not. I've not spent a great deal of time looking at them. But maybe that's it. Maybe it's an elite quarterback. If they have a Joe Burrow coming, we saw what Joe Burrow did for LSU. Maybe that's it for Notre Dame. Maybe it's just that next, maybe it's just getting a quarterback capable of winning a national title. Jared, would you be surprised if I told you that Ian Book was the winningest quarterback in history at Notre Dame? Uh, They started him as a freshman, and so not necessarily, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they got... How many (laughs) many freshmen, how many quarterbacks started four years at Notre Dame? Yeah, that, that's, you know, it's just a numbers game. Yep. Yeah, it, it, it looks like it's a quarterback battle there at Notre Dame. So we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. And so it really might just be that simple. All right. Uh, mentioned Georgia. What What's what's it for Georgia? What's what's getting them over that hump? What I mean, is it just is it Nick Saban retiring? Is that what it's going to take? <laughs> I, th- I think part I think part of it is is that, but I think the other thing too, it's I think a lot of it's that execution part I've mentioned in other teams too. There, there's there's been there's been some parts where it's just it just isn't clicking in that down that stretch there. Can I can I can I throw? Uh, so I mean, this kind of comes down to execution. Uh, Kirby Smart has a real bad habit of not starting the correct quarterback. <laughs> He yeah. kept Justin Fields on the bench. That was a mistake. Um, the USC transfer, whose name I can't remember, they didn't put him on the field until late into the season when it was already too late. Um, I I feel like Kirby Smart is kind of stupid, I think is what it boils down to as far as making personnel decisions, at least at quarterback. I Daniels. JT. Thank you. JT Daniels. Yeah. Um, but now, you yeah. know, who's going to be the starting quarterback or potentially is that starting quarterback this year? Who's that? Buckeye okay, fans should know this name. Dewan Mathis. Well, he was supposed to be the guy last year, too. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but we we don't have. Time oh, no, to... no, I'm sorry. No, that's that's right. You know, he's he's not. That's right. He he transferred. Yeah, I thought so, but I wasn't going to question you on yeah, it because it looked like out. you were yep, looking he, it up. He, he, He's become an owl now. An owl? I think an owl's. Rice? Temple. Temple. Ah, oh, temple. Our 
Is Rice also the Owls? It's you know I don't care. It's fine. We're moving forward. <laughs> uh, yeah, Georgia I, 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 is I, basically I, start yeah, the right bottom, quarterback. Bottom, Nick Saban bottom line, retiring, think, start the right quarterback is what Georgia needs to get over the hump. There we go. Florida. Right, um, let's let's stay in the SEC East. What about Florida? They had the right quarterback this year. They had the right wide receivers this year. Defense looked solid enough. Um, uh, Florida looked like a real good team at times this year, uh, but still finished the season eight and four. This list here that we have here, they're they're honestly the toughest one for me to point out because it's like talents there, play callings there, coaching seems to be there. Like, then what is it? What is it? Is it is it kind of like what you mentioned about Georgia? Is it because of Nick Saban? Yeah. Like, is is it just the general competitive level of the SEC? Which again, I know Ohio State and Big Ten fans who listen to this podcast don't but, hear it is higher. Um, but we got to figure out like what's for Florida here. What is it that gets them over that hump? Yeah, I mean, I personally do not like Dan Mullen, um, and. I'm not saying it's because of him. I'm not saying that because I, I really don't have anything to I maybe I just personally don't like him, um, but I just personally don't like him. So <laughs> maybe 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 that's what it is for me. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't I don't have a strong feeling here or there. Maybe they're just sort of starting to trend in the right direction and they just need to recruit and they recruit. Well, I'm not saying that they don't. but when you're comparing them to the top two recruiting teams in the sec, which is Georgia and Bama, they're not quite recruiting at that level. Mm -hmm. I mean, the last few years here, Jared, they were going back to 2018, 10 and three, 11 and two. And last year, eight and four. They're right there winning that. Like, on winning average there they're they're pretty much the same there it's it's getting over that that hump there of losing probably losing to those teams consistently like it's i don't know like what is it is it just is it consistency play play calling or just execution you know this is one of those times where i really wish austin was in the chat because he uh, attends Florida and, you know, follows them closely. Um, so I'd really like to have his opinion on it. So maybe he can let us know afterwards. But I really don't have a good beat on Florida other yeah. than just the SEC being very deep. And, yeah. And, th- and that's why I said of this list that we have here. That's why I always struggle. I struggle really pinpointing them. And. Yeah, I just struggle trying to figure out exactly what it is that the that gets them over that hump because, like, I'm just looking at all of their losses and all that. Um, like last year, they lost to Texas A&M, who was a good team, very good. Uh, they did, I have they did lose the L- they did lose the LSU, which was not a good. Yeah, well, I guess, I guess that, 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 is, that is a consistency I am seeing. They do they do drop a game. Like I seen 2018, they lost to Kentucky. Right. And then in 2017, uh, <laughs> they lost a bunch of they lost a bunch of games, including Missouri and South Carolina. So maybe that's what it is. They focus consistency. Focus 2016 Arkansas, which maybe 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 that's maybe that's that's where we need to um, come to an agreement here. Then Jared, it's that consistency, not letting up, even if it's two lesser opponents than than the players that you have on your team. It's that consistency week in, week out. Yeah. Uh, uh, we um, brought up Texas A&M. Let's talk let's, real quick. I think Texas A&M is a team on a positive trend. They finished absolutely. in the top four last year, post playoffs. They're a team that could have arguably, arguably made the playoffs last year. Um, I think they're trending in the right direction. And it's just, you're in the same division as Alabama. And like, God bless you. That's is basically what it boils down to. I and I think maybe they're a quarterback away if they're able to develop, recruit, develop an elite quarterback. 
or bring one in via the transfer portal, pull an NLSU. Why not? I, I think maybe they're a quarterback away and maybe it's just a result of being in the division with Alabama and that just being it for them. Yeah, I. Yeah, I think I think it's going to come down to just. Yeah, it's tough. I, I agree with you. I, th- I think they are trending in the right way, like looking at their schedule the past couple of games he, or cu- past couple of years here. Definitely trending in the right direction, like <laughs> 2018 and 19. They had they had a home and home with Clemson. <laughs> yeah, so they, they got they got the taste right then and there of. Of playing that elite team right. other than Alabama, they play every year, too. So, I mean. Boy, that that's a schedule right there. Clemson and Alabama in the same year in the regular season. Yeah. Texas A&M does not need to be taking that game. Like, I'm all for people t- scheduling tough. Texas A&M does not need to be. Of course, that's the thing. When was that game actually scheduled? And was Clemson the current version of Clemson at that point in time? They probably weren't. Yeah, no, that's that's definitely true. Uh, all right, Kyle. But no, I, 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 th- I think with Texas A&M, honestly, keep doing what you're doing and you keep cr- recruiting. Well, you keep playing these teams and like looking at 2019, it was close to Clemson. It was close to Georgia. It was kind of close to Alabama, but then you got your butts kicked in against LSU. Um, and then like looking at last year, um, just one loss. Last they had year. the one loss to Alabama and it took care of business every year. Just keep yeah. doing what you're doing. Yeah. Nick Saban. Hey, Texas A&M, Saban will retire eventually. It's fine. Just, just, just keep at it, guys. You'll be fine. Yep. All right. Texas, Jared. Texas. Uh, this is all. This is the their board and their boosters. I feel like Texas is a completely toxic program, where coaches are not given the benefit of the doubt, who are given up on too quickly. The point, the point um, I, I feel I like mentioned- the problem at Texas is all their administrative. People, their their boosters who feel like they own the program and I feel like they're ruining the program. What what I mentioned about Urban Meyer's quote at the beginning of the show, all three right here. All three. Yeah. I think I think the board I, I think not the board, the uh the boosters just need to let the people in charge do their job and and stay the hell out of the way. But they're not going to do that. So I don't know how you fix Texas, because the people who are filling the purses are the people who are ruining the program. Blinders. They need blinders. Maybe. I mean, but but if the booster says, I'm not going to give you money anymore, like, who are you firing? Who's losing their job because you're not answering emails from the boosters? We, we like to make fun of Michigan for being disorganized and just going into chaos right now. Texas is bad. Texas well, it, is bad. Uh, yeah. Again, because I think that how do you fix it? How? You got, you got to have the right, you got to have to have the right leader in the university to have those conversations with the boosters. Then that's, that's where it starts is that leadership yeah. at the top level. You you need a, a president and an athletic director who are going to stick up to the board or to the boosters. You know what the problem is, Kyle, though? Who really ends up hiring the president and the athletic director? <laughs> there we go. All I don't right, know um, how you fix Texas. Right, I do know how here. you fix oh. Oklahoma. Yes. Play defense. Next. <laughs> play, <laughs> play defense and keep and keep looking for the um for quarterbacks to constantly come into your um, in the transfer portal to come in. Kyle, USC. How does USC get back to be USC? Keep the kids in California. If there is a kid who plays That's for true. Mater Day. They should own the only reason they shouldn't be playing for USC. Is because USC didn't want them. And by the way, they should be owning Bishop Gorman too. Nevada is not that far away. Las Vegas is not that far away. They should be owning every kid out of Bishop Gorman. 
keep the West Coast kit. You know what? They shouldn't be letting Ohio State take all those kids out of Washington like they've been doing. Emeka Ibuka, G. Scott Jr., JTT, I still feel, is coming to Ohio State. Those kids should not be leaving the Pac-12. If USC is losing kids out of Washington, it better be to Washington or Oregon, but not to Ohio State. Keep the West Coast kids on the West Coast. That is how you fix USC. Consistency recruiting, along with what you're saying there, too. Um, Back in 2019, 20th. 2020, 64th. And then last year, better. They got seven, they had the seventh best. So consistency recruiting as well. Absolutely. Not, not just not just keeping the keeping your recruits in the state consistently overall, just recruiting in general. And the and the rest will follow because of the conference that they're in. I I think they can they can they can handle it. They can really just like they can as win the pack as, as much as we Ohio State fans want talent. to rise up all of the other teams that Ohio State plays. Like, oh, Penn State's a Penn State's a tough team. Michigan's a tough team. Wisconsin's a tough team. There, there really isn't in the in the Pac-12 right now. There really no. isn't. This is this is USC's for the taking. Really, anybody's for the taking to we'll see what happens Oregon or Washington. anybody else to just take over. We'll see what happens with Washington because they Washington had a terrible 2020. Uh, but they had a brand new head coach. They had lost a lot of talent and then COVID. So I like, I'm giving Washington a pass for 2020. That was too much to overcome. Oregon Mm -hmm. lost a lot of their top players who opted out of the season. I, I kind of just want to give the entire conference a pass on 2020. Um, But Jared, yeah, let's move on. Last, Last one here that I have. Yeah, I've got it highlighted in our notes here. Yeah, no, uh, let's let, let's take this fingers and point it right back at us. Ohio State. Ohio State got over a hump last year. Okay, so you're Ohio State. And we always talk about the top three, right? Who is it? It's Bama, it's Ohio State, it's Clemson. Those are your top three programs in the country consistently. Problem is is that Ohio State is constantly finding themselves either second or third out of that top three. They got over a hump this year. They got to two because you could, and I, I don't know how I would tell you otherwise, previous to last year said, well, actually, it's a top two. Ohio State's down in that second group. It's really just a top two. It's really just Clemson and Bama. And by the way, they had played in the national title game two times in a row previous to that. Um, No, well, previous, not previous to that, previous to um, LSU winning it. I think they had played twice in a row. Um, Bama has made the playoffs every year, except for the year that LSU won. Clemson, I think, has made every playoff except the first one. Yep. Uh, So. You could have very easily said, and by the way, you could still, uh, you're a little less successful because Ohio State beat Clemson, which is the first hump that they got over, and saying, yeah, we belong in that top three. So Mm -hmm. Ohio State, I think if you're talking, and when you get up to the top, the the, the, (laughs) it, it just keeps getting smaller, the opportunity you have to improve. Mm -hmm. Ohio State, to me, last year, confirmed that they belong in that top three with LSU and Bama. Agree. And now how do you get from that? uh, (laughs) Now, How do you not get embarrassed by Alabama in the national title game? Yeah. yeah. How to get to that tiny step up to get to that, that top pedestal there. Like what is it Ohio state needs to do in my eyes? And again, this was a number of years ago and I, I don't think it really applies to today, but it's still in the back of my mind. I mentioned this with a couple of teams already. Consistency. Yeah. Consistency week in and week out. Which we've seen Not, better consistency out of Ryan Day than we've seen out of Urban Meyer. Yes. No. And that's why, that's why, and that's why I said, I don't think it applies to now, but it's yeah. still in the back of my mind previously. Like you see like. Purdue, <clears throat> Iowa. Purdue, Iowa. Like Michigan games like State. that. And 
yeah, it's games like that that you can't have at you can't and shouldn't have at Ohio State with the t- amount of talent that is there right now. Or if now. you do have them, recover from them. Ohio State had uh, a, a couple stinkers last year, but they came back. Ohio State's had a couple stinkers against Penn State, but launched comebacks. So it's, I, I think Ryan Day, I'm not saying Ryan Day is a better coach. I want to be very clear. I'm not saying Ryan Day is a better coach than Urban Meyer. Urban Meyer is one of the top coaches of all time in college football. Urban Meyer is of his generation. It's like him and Saban. Saban's one. Like we can all just agree to that. But Urban's two. And so I'm not saying Ryan Day is a better head coach than Urban Meyer. I'm not saying that. However, I do think that Ryan Day is a better game day coach than Urban Meyer. I got real tired of Ohio State struggling and Ohio State's offense going and just doing a bunch of quarterback draws because it became predictable. And, and everybody knew everybody knew that. And the and the coaches on the other side of the sideline knew that too. And it it almost that- became a compulsive thing. I mean, we made fun of it on this show. We called it the save us Braxton offense. Then we called it the save it, save us JT offense where it was just, okay, I guess we're just running quarterback draws for the rest of the game. Yep. Um, so what does Ohio state have to do, Kyle, to get to that next level to at least you're, I don't think you're as long again, like we said with Texas A&M, maybe it just takes Nick Saban retiring because I just don't see the tread coming off of that Bama train. Tread on a yeah. train. That doesn't work, but work with me uh, anytime soon. I mean, that's the easiest. That's the easiest solution to say, hey, the best the best coach retire. But yeah. also, I, I think I think for taking that off the table, I think for Ohio State, it's just staying focused i think staying focused is a is a good phrase i want to i'll use here um just staying focused at every week of who's in front of you not get ahead of yourself because we're to the point where there's a lot of teams i mean i'm looking at indiana yeah. who's getting better getting a lot more indiana I, I almost put indiana on this list but like they're they're getting over a new hump every year so whatever they're doing it's working yeah, I mean they're they're getting athletes that I mean, Ohio State seen. It's given Ohio two State players, troubles. Kyle, yeah, they, yeah, two getting, players. Al or Indiana has flipped two players from Ohio State in recent times. Now mm-hmm. there are circumstances with with the latest one with with Deshaun McCullough. His dad literally got hired by the university. His dad, his brother transferred to Indiana. There are circumstances there, but the fact of the matter is, is that they did it. When was the last time a, that Michigan or Penn state flipped a player from Ohio state? I'll, I'll hang up and listen. All right. So mine is, mine is staying focused. What's, what's yours for Ohio state? Like if you can sum it up in a sentence or a few words, I keep doing what you're doing. That, Ohio State's defense had issues last year, and we all knew it. And Alabama's offense was unstoppable last year, and we all knew it. It was just keep doing what you're doing. You're going to get there. Yep. I, I just keep doing what you're doing. You'll get there. All right. Um, <laughs> we're running really long on time. So real quick here, Jared, um, on some of these questions. Yeah. Here. Lightning around the Ask Sloop cast. Buckeye yeah. Zach, how much beer will Nomad be drinking by the end of Sunday's show? Uh, hopefully none. Uh, because <laughs> it's because we're recording early this week. Yes. Um, Nomad over under Henderson rushing for yards this year. And he said it at 600. I'm going to go, go over. over. I think Henderson is starting by the end of the year. Yes. Not not at the beginning um, of the year, but by the end of the year, even if he's not starting, I think when we look back on this season, Henderson has the most carries. That's my prediction. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm going to say over 600 yards. Uh, by the yep. way, real quick, uh, on the Buckeye Weekly uh, with Tony and Tom, they had uh, Tony asked Tom the question, what is more likely? Henderson has 300 yards. Henderson has 1300 yards. 
you have to pick yeah that's a great, that's a fantastic question yeah it really was tony i don't like either i don't like either but which one right and i think i i i'm gonna go with what tom said because tom said we always have to count injury as a thing so i'm gonna go with 300 and i yeah, think I'm it's thinking- going to be such a committee this year like we've never really seen at ohio state in a very long time where you're going to see a lot of different running backs get carries yeah. that I feel like any one running back getting to 13 feels unlikely. Yeah. That's, that's kind of my thought too. Um, it just, there's so much, so many great talent that needs to get on the field. There's just only 11 can get on there at once. Yeah. Um, and a lot of them are going to be receivers this year. <laughs> um. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Kabuto says on a scale of drinking on a scale of drinking milk and khakis to Holy Buckeye. How excited are you for next year's Stroud McCord Ewers quarterback battle? I I don't even. I'm more I'm I'm more worried about this year (laughs) before I start looking at next year. (laughs) It's going to be fantastic. I mean, everything I'm seeing for all three of these quarterbacks is just. It is just an amazing pool that Ohio State's getting in with quarterbacks, wide receivers too, but quarterbacks here. It's yeah. just, it sucks that only one. By the way, can be on the field. It's way too early to say. It's just like there doesn't seem to be any university in in the lead yet, but Ohio State's in play for the best quarterback of the 2023 class as well. You might know his family. His last name's Manning. Maybe, maybe. He's, I'm just saying Ohio State's in play. I'm not, I'm not, Ohio State's in play. That's all I'm saying. It's too early to say anything more than that. Yep. All right. All right. That's it. That's it, Jared. That's all we have time for today. Uh, did, yeah, we got one from everyone who asked one. So yeah, that's all, that's all we have time for. Um, yeah, uh, that's, uh, that's it. We're, as Kyle said, we're going long on time. So uh, just go to the sloopcast.com, find some links and click on them and just see what happens. Uh, guys, we are wanting to, I haven't talked about this in a while. We are wanting to expand the sloopcast into a daily show during the football season, but we, we need, we need a financial investment from people listening to achieve that. And you can help us out on patreon.thesloopcast.com. Uh, our lowest tier, uh, get in, well, actually, technically we have a $1 tier. The $1 tier just doesn't get you any benefits, but at the $3 tier, you can get premium access to our discord, which there's, there's channels in our disc. The discord one is public. Anyone can join the discord discord dot the Uh, but there are premium channels within the discord, uh, that you can, talk to us and, and, you know, maybe just be away from maybe the, the general noise of the rest of the discord. Um, and you can get access to that for as little as $3 a month. You get early access to episodes. You can listen in live while we record this and, and join Stuart and Buckeye Zach and some of the other guys down there who are chatting during the show, giving live feedback. Uh, I, I feel like it's a lot of cool stuff for just $3 a month and you're, you're helping us sort of reach that goal of doing this daily, which I is a thing I'd like to do, but for the amount of time it's going to take us, I, I need to be able to justify the amount of time it's going to take us with, with some financial assistance. So uh, please check that out again. You can do it for as little as $1 a month, but you get a lot of cool benefits at three. So maybe, maybe check out that three and um, that's uh, t-shirts. Um, I'm wearing something from the 7071 store right now. This is the Columbus Panhandles, uh, which, if you don't know, was an original NFL team based out of Columbus, Ohio. Um, Obviously now defunct, but they existed. And so now you can buy a T-shirt from the 7071 store, 7071.thesloopcast.com. And Kyle's wearing some of our Sloopcast merch right now with a beautifully designed logo, I must say. Wow. That's a beautiful logo. Why would anyone ever move away from that logo? It's so beautiful. Or or this one here. (laughs) (laughs) 
All right. Uh, that that those jokes are for the uh, those are for the YouTube people. Sorry, audio only listeners. Those were crew jokes. If you're wondering, those were those were crew jokes. Uh, so speaking of the crew, Kyle, what is in Kyle's corner? Oh, uh, this right here, the crew, the crew, uh, <laughs> crew, the crew. Oh man, it, it was what a week, what a two weeks, what a, what a week, and the game was awful. It was awful, especially the first half. Oh, uh, and I posted and I posted something in, in our Discord. I and I just like. I just I just was in disgust of how they're playing. And then I actually tweeted at one point after the first free kick that was that went in the goal. Uh, I actually said on Twitter, still up there, I didn't delete it. I go. Oh, a tie would feel like a win right now because they, they played terrible, especially in the first half. Then they get the equalizer and oh, it's just Lucas like, is- awesome. Let's get this tie <laughs> oh, there. Yeah, Lucas goal, that second free kick, mm, money. That that is a thing of beauty that should be played like every week. Like that that's gonna be up there like goals for Kyle, the year. Just, his first his first free kick. His first free kick wasn't his best free kick of the game. His second free kick was the was prettier in my opinion. Yes, the second one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. Did I say the first? I meant the second. I, <laughs> it's, I, I think you said the first, but I, I, I well, don't. The second, the second kick that goes Beautiful. over, goes over, um, over the wall and just gets right inside there. The first one was the first one was nice too. I mean, goalie was out of position. I'll, I'll take that any any day, but it just kisses the top of the bar in there. I also don't understand why they didn't have more people, a part of the wall in like directly in. That, that's that's on the keeper. That's on the keeper. But hey, yeah. the, the crew the crew wins two in a row here. They win <laughs> the logo. However, Columbus SC dropped two games last week. Yes, the crew SC lost. The Columbus crew undefeated. Win. They win. All right, that that's it. We're long, we're long on time here, but that's all I got, Jared. All right. Uh, yeah. So I think I think that's everything. Um just crew update uh, crew drama update uh we're back to columbus crew we dropped the sc which is a win we still have the new shitty logo they replaced the stupid triangle with a significantly less stupid 96 so you're getting some history in the stupid modern logo um and it's just like we got the crew back as the official name um, so we're just going to count it as a win and we'll deal with the ugly shield for a few years until they replace it. I feel like they're going to, we're just going to have to deal with it. Kyle over under new shield, two and a half years. I'm going to go as much as I want to say under, I think it's going to be over. Yeah. I think it's probably three or four years. We're going to have to deal with that atrocity of a logo until I, I, we either revert say, to something old or get something even new. I, I, I put, I put the over under at four and a half. I'd go under on four and a half. All right. Uh, yeah. So that's that's it on the crew drama update. We're we're no longer mad at the crew, like we said last week. Uh, and uh, tonight's ending music will be brought to you by a, I believe it is a Cleveland-based artist. I know he's uh, signed to Flower Pot Records, which is a Cleveland-based record company. Uh, but he's definitely Ohio-based. Uh, his name is Joseph Maxwell. The name of this song is my self, not myself, myself. There's a space in there. It's on purpose. I didn't typo it. If you're looking at the notes. Uh, so yeah, Joseph Maxwell, uh, name of the song is myself. And you can, uh, if you're listening to the audio only version of this, you can stick around and hear that song. And if you're not listening to the audio only version of this, then uh, you're about to get some bonus chat content on the YouTube channel. So with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Joseph Maxwell. Flower pout. Hi. YouTube people flower pots actually out of um, not Cleveland. Um, what's 
it's one of their bigger suburbs. I'm blanking on the name. Akron? Like, oh, Akron people are pissed. You just called them a suburb of Cleveland. They are pissed at you right now. <laughs> that is that is blasphemous. They are so uh, mad at you sorry, right now. I, I, I have Parma. Um, it's Parma. I have Youngstown. I have Youngstown on my mind, which there there's a also shooting. not a suburb. <laughs> I know they're not, but I just Parma. Yeah. Parma. That's what it is. Parma, Ohio. I'm I'm not familiar. I'm honestly I'm not familiar with Cleveland suburbs, so sorry, I'm not, not super familiar either, but I feel like Parma's one of the ones I, I I definitely it's one of the bigger ones. And I think anyway, I, I don't I don't know a ton about the Cleveland Metro outside of Cleveland either. Kyle, this is the worst bonus content conversation episode. We blew it on the first bonus content. We're blowing it on the second bonus content. YouTube people are not getting their bonus content that they deserve from us right now. Nothing. You got nothing to say to that. Sorry. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, it's not like you were going to save it. But we did save the crew. Again, two times. Save the crew part two. All right, let's jump into the end, Jerry. All right. I want to thank Joseph Maxwell for ending today's show. I want to thank Duncan from the Discord for basically designing this episode for us uh, with his wonderful wasteland question. And um, I want to thank the Iron Bean Coffee Company for sponsoring today's show. Uh, I talked to, I name checked the Loki last time. Um, this is coffee like a Viking. Uh, I wanted to give the other side of it. Uh, because we talked about the black roast, the fear of no evil black roast on the last ad read. So let's let's go on the opposite side of the spectrum. This is the lightest coffee that you can get over at ironbeancoffee.com. dot um, It's a it's a it's a light medium, a medium light, however you want to however you want to say it. Um, it is. I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm going to try because it's the Sloopcast and that's what we do. We fail horribly at announcing things. Uh, you're good. Cheffy. I feel like I made that way too European. Um, one of the most <laughs> renowned coffees in the world. Wet process blend is higher in caffeine, lower in acidity, rich tasting, filled with fragrance. Citrus and floral are the dominant taste in this blend. It's an Ethiopian, uh, fully washed, um, the Iron Bean Coffee's Loki is a light roast coffee made with 100% Arabica beans to give you the edge and confidence to slay your day. USDA certified and fair trade certified, uh, USD organic certified. I, you know, it's almost the end of the show. Just just work with me here, everyone. Uh, <laughs> it ensures you get the highest quality beans that you can that are available to you probably anywhere in the state of Ohio. Uh, Tastes smooth, never bitter, subtle notes of citrus and floral. 100% natural, natural. Uh, do not compromise with any additives. This is once again, the Loki, the lightest. If you're into light roast or medium roast, lighter than medium roast coffees, then this is your go-to over at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode is was also brought to you by our good friends over at the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company went into the Discord in our middle of the show. I'm going to go into the two border. Two border is another one. Doesn't you? You see two border and you're like, what is what is that? What is a two border? Uh, well, I will tell you, this is a this is their flagship seasoning. So you know it's good if they're if they're coming out right out and just putting it right on their description. Flagship seasoning, the two border. It's a great mix of maple sugar, red pepper flakes that they use on all of their ribs. So if you're going out to any of his food trucks, which, by the way, check out his social media to figure out where he and his food truck are heading to next. He uses the two border on all of their ribs. So if you want to know, hmm, I wonder, what, what seasoning is this ribs? It's the two border. That maple sugar that gives a clean, crisp, sweet flavor, while that red pepper flake has that right amount of Great amount of heat to that pork. 
as Jared can um, can contest here too. It's great on eggs as well. Absolutely. And bacon. The entire yes. breakfast. And just all over the entire breakfast. Everything. You just, you got your plate of breakfast. You just put hey, them all on. And if you like spicy waffles, go for that too. Yes. Uh, check out that seasoning and much, much more over at themedcanybbq.com. That is themedcanybbq.com. Again, social medias for his food trucks. Any other announcements he has to say on there as well. Um, use that promo code SloopCast10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. McKinney Barbecue Company, where he has your butt covered. 